yo, y'all know this is just your boy Q5, Big Smoke, and coming to you live with another episode of the Talk Big Podcast. And yo, when I got some guests with me this time, you know what I'm talking about? We're about to talk big. Now, if y'all don't know where we at, this right here is the official home, the official location, and all of your needs for your art, like speed, curations. And then, yeah, we in Colorado Springs doing Colorado things. And I want to introduce you to the creative. Of like the experience starting all from the beginning of the session. It's not a person that's in the middle. So I know you down, I probably got some haters that I know. So I'll be keeping my successes on the low. If y'all want to review the first Fridays, we do uh, artist intakes uh, from the 1st to the 10th every month. That way we have a uh, whole month to prepare and plan for each show. Um, in addition to just showing art, we also digitize it through photo and media, um, through Let's Be Me, uh, okay, uh, photographs. Um, and we do tattoos in the back uh, events every month, first Friday, as well as whatever other events we got going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, y'all see that? Look, light speed. I need y'all to make it down here at light speed. You know what I'm talking about? I'm gonna put the address up on here on the screen so y'all can come on down and check out Light Speed. Y'all see all the beautiful creations back here behind us. My man right here is wicked on the tattoos, you know what I'm talking about? So y'all gotta come on down here and get that Light Speed tattoo, you know what I'm talking about? Hey, I'm gonna let her introduce herself since Natty ain't never tell nobody his name, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so, what's up? I'm Callie. Um, I am the co, not co, I am the owner and operator of Colorado Springs Flonies. Um, we host events where flow artists can come out and showcase their talents as well as DJs and anyone that wants to come hang out and network is more than welcome. We do quite a few events here at Lightspeed. Um, it's a top hit here. They really love this blue light hall that we got. Yeah, Black light that's hall, that's right, yeah. Um, people are calling it the Meow Wolf of Colorado Springs. You know what I'm talking about? The same hey. If y'all in Colorado Springs, y'all in Denver, y'all already know what Mal Wolf is. Hey, y'all gotta come out here and check this out and see see what's cracking like in that light speed. You know what I'm talking about? When I got up in here, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what's that? You know what I'm talking about? That's how I that's how I, my perception saw everything, you know what I'm saying? So I'll come out here, you know what I'm saying, and see what's cracking like and we got some like I said, some things come out and we'll pop off. A whole lot of things about to happen out here. But look, right now, it's time to talk big. <laughs> I got my boy Nat. Yeah, we got Cal. He want to know what the topic. So I'm gonna have to introduce you to a whole new spectrum of uh, thinking right now. Everybody been asking me for a couple of uh, days. Do you believe that we have only this life? Or we get to come back in another life. We have past lives and alternate lives that we've lived before. I mean, like, what's y'all, what's y'all thoughts on like past lives? How y'all feel about past lives? Me personally, I can remember some of mine. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I accept my karma in this life for the fucked up shit I did in other lives. <laughs> Is that something about? you found by yourself, or was that a guided? All by myself. Okay. Yeah, by myself. Nothing. Nobody talked to me about. Nobody. What it was is um, dreams. Everybody keep on saying like, uh, oh, this is a dream, this is a dream, this is a dream. Then I, so as I have my memories and my dreams and all that, like, okay, dreams, right? But what the fuck do you remember that you don't remember? You know what I'm saying? What, what can you remember that you don't remember? So when I realized that everything, I can't remember nothing that I don't remember. So everything that I'm dreaming about is a memory. It's just not attached to my brain. It's not attached to my, my physical mechanism. It's not attached to this memory. It's attached to a, a, another memory that's more stronger and has a higher capacity of knowledge that can hold centuries of information. The spirit, you know what I mean? The spirit contains memory. And so I said, oh, when we dream, that's us tapping into our spiritual self. And viewing the images and the pictures that is captured over the years, because some of these things don't be in this realm. Right. You see what I'm saying? Some right. of the things we dream about don't be nowhere near this right here. 
talking about the Kafka reference, where the, 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 the basically the uh, ethereal uh, or actual projection of the memories of all of A caustic records? I ain't too uh, too keen on this. Hey, yo, pull up that. Let me know, see what kind of information we can put up on uh, a caustic record. You got any information on that right there? So basically, saying that you can teleport your your mind, your uh, thoughts, and your uh, your energy somewhere else. In other words, yes, through astral projection. Through astral. Now that I highly believe of. You know, what I'm talking about. I practice that often. What am I looking at? A caustic projection. Here we go. There we go. Yeah, so you know what I'm talking about? He said a cosmic projection here. Don't y'all expect me to know how to spell that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to tell you right now. <laughs> uh, I didn't know nothing right. Wait, wait, okay. Let's look this up. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Right. Yeah, like, I, I, I believe in like, um, you definitely, can, everybody can astro travel if you, if you exercise the capabilities that you possess, you know what I mean? Yeah. Your, your limitations is, is by your closed mind. Yeah, usually first through uh, you should dream of realizing that you're dreaming and then uh, interacting with cause and effect through your dreams so and then you take no control. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you get to a point where you're actually traveling to different places. She got some information what we got. Man, nah. all right, so what Google's telling me is in the religion of theosophy and the philosophical school called anthroposophy. I'm probably saying all of this completely wrong. Okay. Um, the Akashic records are a compendium of all of all universal events, thoughts, words, emotion, and intent ever to have occurred in the past, present, or future in terms of all entities and life forms, not just human. Hmm. That right here uh, reminds me of uh, picture your fingers, cross them through your fingers, but you can get another set of fingers to cross them through here and then cross them through there and cross them through there. Like a, uh, like a, not like a web, but not like a web just spent in a, a one dimensional plane, but a web spent in a unlimited dimensional plane. If that make any sense? Because like, I give you an example, like uh, this whole thing about ghosts. Many people believe in ghosts. Many people have seen ghosts. Many people have seen spirits or whatever they eyes have seen. It's uh, To me, I believe all that stuff exists on the exact same playing field as us. It's right here, right now. We pass it through each other mm -hmm. because the energy frequency is not vibrating at a physical level. Our energy frequency is vibrating at a physical level, so it creates a physical form. Their energy frequency is vibrating at a higher level than physical form. So their frequency, certain uh, uh, things can pass right through us. Does that make any sense? Yeah. No, yeah, we're, we're constantly interchanging paths with spirit and energies, um, whether we're aware of it or not with our physical eyes. Um, because energy is never created nor destroyed, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, no, just no, a, no. it's a constant. It's constant. a constant. So just because our physical bodies aren't here does not mean that our energy and what we're portraying is not continuing, um, which is a crazy thought to have because, for example, right now, right here, how many souls are around us? How many spirits? How many energies are in our... In our presence. In our that presence. Are unaware. Mm -hmm. To me, I think it's... Um, if you take as far as your eye can see on a beach of nothing but sand and every grain of sand that your eye can see, whether you can count it or not, that's the limited, that's the possibilities that exist. Like I give you an example. You're sitting right here in this time frame and some whole nother spectrum, one uh, vibrational level up to the point that we can't see each other or mix on the same playing field. Another you was sitting right there, but that other you might be Oriental. Mm -hmm. And on another period, the other you might be Black. The other you might be from Hungary, uh, Hungary. Another you might be from Brazil. But every form of you is sitting right there on that playing field right now. So what we're really talking about is not only like metaphysics, but also like physics. This is, this is. Almost like, yeah, quantum physics. Yeah, quantum yeah, physics yeah. and quantum physics and quantum 
the theoretical quantum physics, etc., multi dimensions, um, string theory. Like I give you an example. Um, five base four, which is the proof of in five base, and that's what gives you the, the um, this. Yeah. Also, the you know, like a cool. solid, a liquid, a gas, or a plasma, because of how it vibrates. But that's not how all energy vibrates. That's just how you know, this plane right right vibrates in this plane field. Yeah, yeah. Range is what they just used to call uh, prime material, but not proof the prime material plane of existence. Uh, as we're talking about multiple dimensions and multiple planes of existence. Yeah, yeah. That's what that's, that's we're really talking about. Yeah, the Malkuth. You know what I'm talking about? Y'all ain't know what the Malkuth is. Y'all got to go there. Come back, then you know what I'm talking about. And I don't even know. I don't know what I'm talking about either. I'm <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I, if, 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 if it makes any sense, I've experienced it, but I just never knew the term now. Mm-hmm. If that make any sense, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, uh, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me give you an example, another example. Um, let's say, um, Deja Vu. You're not seeing deja vu. All you did is a, a briefly saw through your other eyes mm-hmm. on another playing field somewhere else that just doing the exact same thing that you're about to do, but they just did it first. You you project astral projected yourself to your other you. Like I give you an example. I call myself nobody don't know why I call myself Q5 because thus far in my existence, I my name is Quentin. But we stand for fifth born of royal blood, so that's where the five come from, you know, Quint five, you know what I'm saying? But also, I've been able to, what you call dreaming, or me, people may call dreaming, travel to other places, travel to other realms. And the one thing I used to do, and one thing I always used to notice, right, when I travel, when I start become conscious, this is how I first uh, uh, become uh, aware of it. I'm in some place else. I'm running for something, I'm scared. Yeah. I'm running, running, running. And then I decided, I don't want to be scared, I'm gonna fight. And I turned around and I decided to fight back the thing that was coming after me and the thing got scared of me and took off. And I was like, whoa. That was my first time experiencing like, oh, I can control what happens in these in these places that I'm going to and all that. I said, oh, I can make conscious decisions even when I'm so-called dreaming, but I'm, I know it's not dreaming, I'm traveling. So the one thing I always notice is when I go to these different places in my vision and my view is always of an external source, just like right now. You see my face more than I've seen my own face today. And I've seen your face more than you've seen your own face today. So it's always from when I go to these places, I'm like, oh shit, even the view is the same. So I'm saying, I know I have to know I'm inhabiting another version of me because the view is the same, but not the place. This place I never seen with these eyes. But when I'm traveling, it's like, oh shit. And the one thing I say, I start telling myself, I say, I know what I'm gonna do from now on. When I go to these places, I'm gonna consciously find water. And so I tell everybody who got the ability to do this, do not go in with the perception that you're going to look like this. What you see in the water, because water is the fastest thing to cast a reflection. You know what I'm talking about? You don't even go find mirrors in these new places because right. you won't be there that long, if that make any sense. Right. So water is the fastest thing, you, and we all go to places where we experience water. Go look in the water. Don't be afraid of what you look like, if that make any sense. You might think you've seen something else but the something else is you because in the other realm, you don't look like this. You don't look like the face that you inhabit in this realm. You look like something completely different. And you got to accept, oh shit, that's me. Because when you move, you're going to see the movement of you. But you got to accept what you look like when you're able to ask or travel and then go find one. Mm-hmm. If that makes any sense. Yeah, that's, that's the only... Uh, logical advice I can give people without going too deep and sounding crazy. <laughs> you know what it's not crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go find some water when you travel. <laughs> that takes me back to with the dreaming and past lives. Um, so how we were speaking that dreams could be past lives or showings of past lives. Do you also agree that dreams could be of different dimensions of something that can happen in the future? Um, Anything else besides just past lives? What else do dreams mean to you? Yes, precognition. So time is not a straight line. Time is 
um, multiple nows split up into that multiple dimensions. It's more fractals and that um, the different facets of the, you know, you, you ever seen a, you've all seen like a piece of quartz crystal. Yeah. And like the elite humans cut them into multiple facets. So, and sometimes we actually go grow right. in this matter. But just because it has that face on it doesn't mean it's not based in the whole of that crystal. Right. And You're not seeing all of it. Correct. And that's that's how time works because we experience it um, in multiple multiple instances of the now. Multiple instances of the now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Alan Watson says there is no past, just the memories of what we did in, in previous nows. And there is no future, just the hopes and dreams, and what may come from working within the now. Mm, I disagree with him on that one, because only because of my experience. Uh, and this is my experience. So, uh, may sound crazy, but just because you didn't experience the shit, don't mean I crazy. That means you crazy because you didn't experience the shit. Yeah. <laughs> Check this out. But look, yeah. Uh, in regards to the question that she just asked. Um, my, my outlook on this, uh, I kind of already iterated, um, is memory. It's nothing but memory. What you call a dream is a memory. That's the one where you've seen things and you, oh shit, uh, memory of old things. And then there's the other one where you're interacting in what you're seeing. Because there's other places where we only can see and we can't interact with this. The people that's there don't even see us. Would you not call that a dream? If, uh, that's a memory. That's a memory. Then there's the other one. You go to, I, I'll explain that for this. That's a memory. Then there's the other one where you go to an existence. You travel into the other you. You jump briefly into the other you and got the salt in your other eyes. Mm -hmm. And that's why you see your vision don't look like, oh, I can see me. You can right. see just like the exact same vision that we get because one is a memory and one is, 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 is a forward. you just going into another and I, I explained to this with the human mechanism. I always uh, try to explain this. This thing only got two abilities, two profound abilities. To look forward and to look back. And to look back is called memory. And to look forward is called creation. Because when we look forward, all of a sudden we get visions, we get thoughts, we get ideas. And all of a sudden, but it's, you see this idea? This idea didn't come from here. This idea because somebody saw into the other realm. And brought the vision back and like, oh, you know what? Wrote it down and draw it out. They draw the vision. They wrote the vision that they saw in their head, then they see it on paper, and then they gather the material things in this realm to build the vision. Mm -hmm. Everything that we is being created is being replicated from another realm, from different realms, different realms, and then people come here and they replicate it here. And uh, I, I back to uh, I was saying this thing had a profound uh, ability to remember and to um, and to look forward. And when we look forward, we're creating. You know what I'm saying? And in in that instance, meaning like uh, I I can't travel to every playing field because I can't. I got my frequency high enough to be able to get there. But whatever frequency that you can turn your volume up or down to. You're entitled to go there. Just like when we listen to the radio, you turn the radio on this station, you hear something on that station, say something on the next station, et cetera, with the TVs and stuff like that, and the uh, phones, whatever we tune into, whatever frequency we tune into, we entitled to see what's on that. Any frequency you can get your body to, you're entitled to go there. I know I can go certain places every night when I go park this thing, I can go back to the same places we are currently. Because I said certain places I know how to get my frequency on. And, um, and going back to the original uh, question, I believe that, um, no, fuck belief. Believe either you know or you don't know. Yeah. Fuck a belief. I know that we exist on multi dimensions. Meaning, like, uh, for me, everybody, for everybody else, this is the present, right? I don't consider this the present. Because the places I've been to, what I've seen and experienced, this is the ancient past to me. Ancient, ancient past. Let me show you ancient past. We take metals like this, hard metals and steels and solid metals, 
and we consolidate them in different forms and add some electricity we call robots. Oh, robots are going to lead the way in the future, blah, 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 blah. We still thinking of metal robots leading the future. From whence we came and somebody built this, they built fucking liquid robots. Like, you ever seen that movie with a uh, Terminator? Yeah. Where they got the, the, the hard Terminator, then they got the, the liquid one yeah. that it can patch itself up and heal itself and all this? Check this out. Cut me and watch me heal by myself. I don't gotta do shit. Little nanobots call fucking uh, red blood cells and white blood cells just working hard, repairing. Look at this. My, my skull cap. A lot of people don't know the, how the brain and all this stuff work right here. The skull cap is made predominantly out of uh, not people don't know copper. That's why in all of the magnesium is the gray on your uh, the all metal, liquid metals. We got zinc. We got iron. We got magnesium. All of these different liquid metals that our body makes itself out of. Liquid metal. Superior. Uh, uh, technology. So when we come here, oh, this is the future, this is the future, oh, the, the, we're in the future, blah, 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 blah. I look at them like, y'all have no idea. This is the ancient past that we are visiting. That's why we're so fascinated with it. Let me, tell, let me show you why every human being has an expansion for more. Because from whence we came, more is possibility is so fucking knowledgeable, so much knowledge. We are so advanced from whence we came for somebody to be able to build one of these and the flying gnats and the mechanisms and the and the suns and uh, all, yeah, all of, do you see how the fuck I was watching? I'm just laughing so it's not smashing. But you see like how the, every, uh, the, the, all of the mechanisms in this world that's been built by the creators or the creator, whichever one, I don't know, plural or plural, I don't bullshit nobody. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But all of the things that's built here, look how look at the creation, bro. And we still were over here bum fumbling over one airplane that can go spin around in a circle. So with creations, I mean, what do you believe? You still about with, with, with creation, with us. Like who, who created all this? If who? If who? Yeah. How are we made? How did you get here? All by choice. How I get me personally? How do I get here? Is by choice. Sure. No, I'm not saying no. Right. Everybody else think, oh, I have no choice to come here. Blah, no, blah. yeah. That's a we everybody. set the destiny yeah. that we were gonna have yeah. long before we ever see. Where you thought? If, if this is this, uh, this is this Earth one, this Earth two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, Another possibility I'm sitting right there, and you know, all our, all the possibilities keep someone. You see what I'm saying? So we choose the game that we want to go into. Do you think we choose from a, a place of like where God is? Like, how do you? No. How do, what's your idea uh, with that? No, no I'm a just is my opinion. So y'all yeah. don't shoot me for my opinion or my experience. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, higher for, higher resident beings exist here and they watch out for us just like how we watch out for the dogs mm -hmm. if that make any sense yeah dogs are smart intellectual beings but compared to us they're not we are smart intellectual beings but there are other beings right here resonating on the same playing field watching viewing listening Helping us. Remember the time you almost been in an accident? Remember that time you almost couldn't pay this, but it came through for you anyway, but doing it nothing? Our guides. Oh. I don't say guides. Mm -hmm. I say higher resonating beings are here amongst us, but we not conscious of them, but they are very conscious of us. So meaning that those higher resonating beings, they're the ones helping us. But we talk about the creator of, of whoa, all of that? No way near here in this realm. No. Because see, I know I know exist in this room. I'm just like almost like if I get on one of these little virtual reality glasses, plug in, you plug yours in, you plug yours in. Now all three of us can see each other in the same realm. But you might be in Texas, you might be in New York, I might be way in, in Arkansas. That's probably how it is. And then we tap in, but we the same place. And because the the way the mechanism ties us to five senses. Touch, hearing, smell, boom, 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 boom. I'm feeling this, but when I close my eyes, you don't even exist in me. 
I know you're there because your voice needs to exist to me visually. Now, if you kill off my hearing and my vision, I don't even know you exist to me unless I can smell you in the room. You see what I'm saying? Definitely ain't gonna try to taste you, this motherfucker. <laughs> you know, come on. <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? We only hear because of the type, the entanglements of our five senses to, I call it the AI. This is the AI. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah, you know, yeah, this is, to me, this is the AI. So, like, we entangle to this thing, and it has a processing mechanism. And it processes information with only what it gathers. But we are able to get, uh, process differently from the AI, if that makes any sense. That's why when you stop, you hear the motherfucker still thinking. Still thinking, still thinking, still thinking, still thinking, still thinking, still thinking, still thinking. Even when you completely quiet, your mouth ain't even moving, you ain't saying nothing of expression, but the AI is still saying a whole lot. A lot of people don't realize that you're supposed to have full control of it. If you don't take full control of it, it will go on autopilot. And most people are running on autopilot like a motherfucker. Yeah. Hence, the inability to control emotions. Now, I let mine run wild just for fun. You know what I'm saying? Because it's pretty cool sometimes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, that's funny for you. Now, I'll give you an example, all right? If you, if you had to... Uh, if you had to... Save somebody's life, right? And you really have to get after this person. You have to save this person's life, but you have to fight somebody else to save that person's life. What emotion would you trigger in within yourself? Mind you, you gotta fuck somebody up. What emotions you gotta trigger in yourself to save that person's life? How do you, man? How do you even place that? At that point, I don't know if I even it's more if I even more consciously more. like. I'm showing you that every emotion. emotion. I'm telling you, every emotion is a sign for an act. Uh, anger. If you need to ferociously defend, you gotta conjure anger. It don't have to mean you have to have hateful anger, but you just need the energy of anger. Now I'm gonna show you the same thing. Now uh, you want to just get away from uh, something, a danger. All you want to do is get away, but you want to get away as fast as possible. What emotion would you trigger within yourself? Fear. Fear. See? Every emotion have appointed times to use them appropriately. But the thing is, you know how we say, oh, you're out of control. What's out of control? People's emotions. They don't know how to control their emotions, so they're using emotions for wrong reasons. Like, People use empathy, empathetic for a bunch of dumb shit, a bunch of soft pussy people in this world. You know, I'm talking about excuse my language, but it'd be like guys that shouldn't really be that fucking soft and so fucking empathetic about everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it should be their women that shouldn't be that fucking empathetic about everything. Like, I give you an example. Empathy, right? Uh, I give you proper usage first, then wrong usage. No, y'all can give me a wrong usage if you can recall me. Uh, empathy. Um, your mother just passed. You just lost your kid. Um, anybody passed. You gone. You ain't coming back to this realm. I can empathize. I know you feeling some type of uh, disordaining within your spirit because you're going to miss them. You is you know you're hurting right now. That's this time for empathy. But then you see somebody, two people in an argument, uh, arguing, lady and man arguing all this and. The man, no, 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 at the lady, oh, you bitch, so and so. And the lady ain't seem to be saying none of that back. She just ain't that type of person. But she, and empathy makes somebody go jump in somebody else's fucking business and go defend the lady. I'm going to give y'all a short story. Coming up, me and the, uh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Coming up, me and a group of guys, we are uh, coming down the street. We saw this one guy beating the fucking brakes off of this one woman. And she was yelling and screaming and hollering and all that. And I'm like, God damn, let's go help her. And everybody else was like, yeah, let's go help her. So you know what we did? We went down the street and we beat the brakes off of that motherfucking dude. You know what I'm talking about? And after we beat the brakes off of this military dude, you know, we was young boys. We was only like 14, 15, 16. Uh, the oldest of us was 17 at the time, you know what I'm saying? And I was, what, the, the youngest, actually 14. So 
but I was the biggest though, you know what I'm saying? So we beat the brakes off of this fucking grown ass man beating this woman up in the street. After we beat the brakes off of this man, guess what? The woman, she done gone, got loose, got free, because we beat him up, so she done uh now I'm going, got free, and she's walking back to, to the house all fucked up and shit like that. The guy tell us, y'all don't know what this woman just did. Now, he fucked up because we beat him bad. And he, he said, y'all don't know what this woman just did. She said, this is my wife. I'm in the military. I have to get tested all the time because I'm in the military. She just gave me AIDS. And from that moment on, I never intervened into nobody else's business. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, I'm thinking yeah. like, so I'm realizing like, oh, I, oh shit, he giving her a beat. That pain only going to last momentarily. Ugh. But she just gave him a death sentence. That pain ain't never going to stop to the day you die. Because it's always going to be in your mind circulating and conscious and all that stuff. So like, yeah. yeah, yeah, man. Empathy for for death, for grieving. Yeah, yeah. for yeah, for grieving. I mean, I, uh, I don't. I, but I don't understand. Depends on how a person was. What's the, the, the to me? It's a death is a celebration. Mm-hmm. I hate that. I, it, it makes other people uncomfortable. I know it makes like everybody else seem to be really sad. I'm like, good for them. Like, no more taxes. No more pain. No more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Obviously, you know, we're bullshit. Like me, on to the next level. I feel you. Me personally, I agree with you 100%. I embrace them. When time to go, fucking time to go. And if it ain't time to go, you're just gonna be fucked up still here. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Something might happen to you, but you're just gonna be still here and you might be fucked up a little bit. You know what I'm talking about? But when time to go, when time to go. So, me, I embrace uh, death. But I'm just saying, I understand the empathy of it. If a mother loses her child, your mom would just die abruptly. If it's one of them old age thing, and then you see it coming out, they've been sick for a while, you see it coming, you got time for a period when it's abruptly. I just understand if somebody crying and they hurting in the morning, you know what I'm saying, uh, for whatever reason it is, I just understand. That's the time I can empathize with you and console you and, you know, and, you know yeah, try to help lift your spirits up if the spirit is down or whatever. Something. I can understand that part, but... I'm just saying for uh, dumb reasons. Just dumb reasons? No. Uh, just every little thing. Oh, you shouldn't do that. Oh, you shouldn't say that. How the fuck you mean I can't say that in the first amendment as well? <laughs> Freedom of speech. You know what you're saying? Or, I don't yeah. know, man. I'm, I'm a pretty big empath myself. Um, but I could choose when to be empathetic and when not to be. Definitely. Um, but I can't say there's not times that I'm even just watching a TV and I start to feel some type of way and let it affect my day. It totally happens to me. Um, that's something I need to control more, sure. But it totally happens to you. You know what, me? Uh, I control uh, exactly what you were saying. I control uh, my emotions by playing with them. Like sometimes I want to cry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but I ain't going to just cry for no more. Sucker shit, you know what I'm talking about? I want to cry simply because I want to cry. So I know I can go watch certain things. Like when I watch fucking AGT, American Got Talent, people, accomplishments, everybody fucking happy, these are tears of joy. Yeah. That shit make me cry all the time. Yeah. So I choose how I cry. But if somebody try like sorrow, yeah. I'm more like... AGT, like you can choose whether or not you want to be invested. Like one day you can sit there and watch it and have no investment in it. They have all those great things happening. You're like, cool. Yeah, yeah. And another time you're watching it and you're all in it, man. It's the coolest shit that's happening. You're excited. You're hoping they're going to give them that golden buzzer or whatever yeah, it is, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. It really depends. There's just I, there's I, different I, times. I, like, I, Cause I know crying is healthy, right? Yeah. But I only want tears of joy. So I choose to go watch things that People accomplishment, they happy, and everybody happy, and then I let sorrow come, then I let tears come on my eye because I'm happy that they happy. I empathize with the moment. Mind you, the moment's already passed because it's right. on the TV. Right. You know what I'm saying? So the moment you're feeling really it so yeah. rawly. Yeah, so I I, I I control my empathy because now I want to feel empathy, mm-hmm. but I don't want to go throw empathy out the most dumb shit. I want to feel empathy, so I go in there, I watch EGT, I empathize with the success. And accomplishments, good things, not empathizing with a huge thing, negative thing, crying for somebody dead. And doing those things too, that's exhausting. 
yeah. empathize with every <laughs> negative thing that happens is freaking yeah. exhausting trying to be there trying to be supportive trying oh man i feel oh i feel that like i don't want to feel that right now i'm yeah, not trying yeah. to feel that yeah you ever got like friends that just got nothing but fucking negative energy. every time they hit you up oh man oh, you could be sitting there like oh today i had a great meeting i had all this cool shit happen like oh yeah, yeah well my boyfriend wouldn't get me mcdonald's <laughs> girl <laughs> you know come out on some crazy how would you do that <laughs> Uh, I deal with a lot of people all the time. Um, a lot of people all the time. So I try not to let other people's uh, negativity and shit bear me out. Yeah, yeah. I think that's my problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's my problem. Got that barrier. Yeah. That's what I did. kind of how I deal with like, like, like people scan and touch people. Like, I'm all up in your girl. The so energy. you're a tattoo and you're right, you're right, you're right. You're right. You're right. And you're sitting there for five fucking hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you got to be good for it. Very strong mm-hmm. energy. Big time, big time. I feel you 100% on that. People, yeah. but people, sometimes people can't even be excited for you because they're just so sad. You know what I mean? Like, they're just such sad people all the time. Always got something bad going on. They can't even be excited for you in your own shit. Real talk. Like, this, this is how I label them when I meet them. Everybody I meet, I classify uh, into, in like these categories. First thing I do when I hear people talk, is this person an optimistic person or a pessimistic person? Mm-hmm. Based off of the things that they say. Or if somebody is just, so, so, oh, I can't do this because that. Oh, you can't do this. I, mean, I listen to every single word of my artist, so I'm trained with my ears as well as my eyes and my hands. You see what I'm saying? The senses, you know? Uh, so I listen to people say when they say, oh, I can't do this, I can't do it. When I hear the word can't, I go back to fourth grade and Fryson Elementary and Water Blood and Miss Mitchell, Miss Maddie Mitchell took the whole class and make us write down can't on a, on, a, on a piece of paper. And we took that can't and we put it inside of the shoebox. And we go in the back of Fryson Elementary and we dig a big old hole and we throw that word can't inside of that old hole. And we all of us get to throw a shovel of dirt. Boom, the next one, boom, the next one, boom. And guess what? I said, Ms. I asked Ms. Mitchell, hey, can I pack the dirt when you're done? Everybody else want to wanna throw dirt at me? I won't throw dirt on the hole. I won't pack dirt. I want to see you can't in that motherfucker. You see how you saying? So can't don't really exist in me. So I hear people use like pessimistic words and stuff like that. I'm like, all right, pessimistic, optimistic, okay. Then immediately, I go for the next category. If I see the pessimistic person, this is what I do. I classify them in my three C's. My comrades, my constituents, and my confidants. My comrades. The comrades are when people like war. Oh, my comrade in war. You all see the military people call each other comrade because a comrade is a person who want to tear down some shit. Mm-hmm. When you just want to tear down and be destructive, mm-hmm. they ready for it. They got your back in a heartbeat. They always against whatever you're against. If you against something, you can be Against me, I mean, for me today. But the second you turn against me, oh, that fucker ready to be against you too. You see what I'm saying? They join the team against me. If you for me, they ain't going to join the team because they're not for what you're for. They're only against what you're against. They're there for negative. But the thing about comrades, um, you can use comrades for a positive cause. If you're trying to tear down a bad thing, oh, does that yeah. make any sense? Yeah. Yeah, they're be, always ready to be haters. Yeah, always Sometimes ready to you be need haters. Those haters. haters. Like, for example, <laughs> not to shout anyone out, but there was a festival that was supposed to happen this weekend that did not happen. Um, and I was really looking for some of those haters to just pop out and do their thing, but I was kind of disappointed they all got a little quiet. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> The haters got quiet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. My next seat is my constituents. My constituents is the people that's for what I'm for. If I got a vision, oh, they ready to add to the vision. They throwing ideas. They throwing uh, new possibilities towards the thing. They ain't said you gotta do, them, but they still suggesting things. So they add building blocks to me by suggesting anything. You see what I'm saying? Those constituents, they ready to uh, ready to build. You gotta cause this bill for this cause. You see what I'm saying? Your constituents are for what you're for, but they're never going to be against what you're against. If you start being negative on some bullshit, they out because they ain't here for that. They here to build. 
Yeah. That's all they want to do is build, 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 build. When it starts to negative energy. Only good. Yeah, a constituent in a hall ass in a minute. But the one thing you got to know about the karma and the constituents, they're only there for the moment of being against what you're against or for what you're for. Mm-hmm. Because you know, in life, we have oscillating moments where we are against things and we're for things. So you got to learn how to delegate your friends and your circle for the specific reasons of things. So, like at me, my present moment in life, I have no need for comrades at this present moment in my life. I don't need to tear down shit. You know what I'm talking about? All I want to do is build and be constructive and positive. You know what I'm saying? But when I need some comrades, I got a few, well, like a few, more than a few, too many that I can call. You know what I'm saying? Word. Yeah. In my last seat, confidant. You ain't going to get that often in life. A confidant is somebody that you can tell absolutely anything to. And you ain't got to worry about hearing that thing back again inside your circle. So you know who I found to be the best confidant in life? Not even me, because I repeat shit to other people. You know what I'm talking about? We sometimes yeah. we tell things to people. So I was like, Don't oh, even to slip up. Yeah, yeah. Now you slip up on attention. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm going to tell them this, and then we tell them this because we think that person cool for the moment mm-hmm. that they cool. Then we confide in people like boyfriends and girlfriends. We confide in them for the moment because we locked in at that moment. You confide in people. So now I've learned not to confide in people that I know. Now I confide in strangers. Word. You Therapist. Me, Go to the therapy. Me, I ain't going to therapy. <laughs> therapy is a total stranger to me. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah. Travel, travel far away from 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 where you at. For, hey, that does one thing, and then to be able to just look upon yourself. I see a lot of people um, needing to go to therapy, and a lot of the reason why they need true. to go is because they have a hard time self-reflecting. They can't see what they did in the situation. Mm-hmm. They can't see their true intention. Or the other side of it, what the other person did, what their intention was. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I feel a lot of growth that happens from therapy that I've done within myself, and I'm sure you have as well, yeah, is, yeah. you know, being able to look back and look back with an open mind. And look, you know, if y'all ain't catch all that, Callie talking about self reflection being the best therapy. And me personally, I, I concur 100%. But look, y'all, yeah. Only person who can correct your ways is you. Now, a certain religion is going to scapegoat uh, your actions. Oh, the devil did it. Oh, the devil, this one made me do it. If you if you want to scapegoat your own actions to somebody else, you're never going to correct your actions because you're not taking responsibilities for your own actions. You know what I'm saying? But when you, like, say, like, I give you an example. Every bad decision I ever made in my whole entire life, I was conscious of the good decision, and a bad decision, but I chose the bad one anyway for the fucking thrill. Yeah. You know what absolutely. I'm saying? And then when I had to deal with the, the consequences of the bad decision, or not all of a sudden, people around me taught me that the devil did the devil that. And then as I'm an older man, I, yeah. I now know that the devil didn't did shit. I made a conscious decision to make the, to make the wrong choice. You know what I'm saying? So I had to deal with the consequences of every wrong choice. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And when you don't, it's when you start to see the issues. Yeah, accountability. Exactly. That's when you don't hold yourself accountable, when you don't look back, when you don't reflect, that's when you repeat those actions. Because you will repeat your actions until you learn the lesson that you're supposed to learn from it. Literally. Cycle of thinking. Thinking in cycles. Yep. Thinking in cycles. That's why like, I always Breaking. tell people, you see sometimes like, damn, I'm going through the same shit that I'm going through last year. Two years ago. Because you're cycling thinking, you know, that even though it's been an annual cycle, your mind came back to the same place and it didn't progress forward right, off of where you at last year. Because you know what I'm saying. So now we're talking about karma. Leaning into it, leaning into it. Karma's <laughs> real. Karma's real, real. motherfucker. I do everything I do. Came back to me wrong, so I don't be wrong no more. Things I've done before, <laughs> things I thought about doing, like yeah. it's. A- you know what I'm talking about? I don't do wrong no more. I, I just enjoy me now. I just enjoy me. I'm talking about I do me. I don't do wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, exactly though. I do me. I try to worry about me. And I don't try to do anything with bad intention, which is why I feel like I can worry about me because I'm just moving good. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, moving good. Yeah, I feel you 100%. Mm-hmm. And yo, look, yeah, we had a great conversation. We had a great topic, man. I should really enjoy this conversation. I should really enjoy the company. 
If y'all don't know by now, we at where? Lightspeed Curations. You did? You know what I'm talking about? Lightspeed Curations. Y'all see all the art behind us? Y'all see that right there? Buy some art. Hey. We got one of the coldest tattoo artists right here doing this thing. You know what I'm talking about? Call over Springs, you did? So, if y'all want to get it like it's free and do it like it's me, nah, y'all do that. You know what I'm talking about? Holler at my boy, boy, so he can get that tattoo. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Hey, we just had a great episode of Talking Big on Talking Big, you know what I'm saying? Podcast. And I thank everybody for listening, everybody for tuning in. In the meantime, between time, y'all will not like a tree root. Deuces.